I see. This is patient we. I see a chance. Because you remember what Raven was looking for? Who remembers? Light. He was looking for light. He said, I see a chance. Raven changed himself into a pond needle and floated down into the water. And the next time the girl took a drink, Raven went in her mouth and went down inside her. That's right. And you know what? A few months later, the girl had a baby. Uh-huh. She did. She had a baby, and that baby, I know, it kind of looked like a baby. He was dark. He was small. He had shiny black hair and tiny black eyes. Do you know who the baby was? Raven. It was Raven, reborn as a child. Oh, the Sky Chief loved Raven. He would come every day and he would play with Raven Child. He would carve him little wooden toys. He called the elders of the tribe to come and look at this curious new baby that his daughter had had. And all of the elders gathered around and they watched Raven. They would watch him crawl around on the to. floor and play. He'd say, nah, 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 nah. And they'd watch him play, but Raven wasn't really playing. Raven was just pretending to play because really, Raven was looking for the light to bring to the people. And off in the corner, he saw a big box. Now, now, he said. Now, now, what does the baby want, they said. The Sky Chief said, he wants the box. Bring him the box. The box had bright colors on it and out of the box, there seemed to be coming light. No, no, said Raven. His mother set the box in front of him. No, no. And then he started to cry. And the mother said, what do you want? The grandfather said, he wants you to open the box. So she took the top off of the box. But inside was another box. She took the top off of that box, and inside was another box. But out of that box, there was all kind of light came flooding out into the room. And down at the bottom of the box, there was a ball of light, flaming light. She took that ball out, and she put it in front of Raven. Raven, who had been crying, stopped. Ryan, and he began to play with her son with the ball. He rolled it around the floor, rolled it around, and the elders watched as he played with the son, and then suddenly he surprised them. Raven child turned into a bird. The elders and the sky chief and the daughter looked, and then Raven changed himself back into a raven. The Sky Chief and the elders looked on in amazement. Raven picked up the sun in his beak and flew out through the smoke hole in the lodge, out into the sky. Raven flew over the lakes and along the rivers, and he took the sun and he threw it up into the sky, where it stuck, and you can see it to this day. And that is how Raven brought light to all the people.
There's another one written by Heather Farr, but where I learned this version of the story from is from a recording of hers called Sing Me a Story. So I'm going to tell this story, and I'm going to do it the way Miss Forrest does, and I'm going to sing it as I go, okay? And you're going to have to help me. Now, in this, in this story, I'm going to ask if you have anything to put in the magic pot. If you can think of anything, raise your hand. And maybe, not yet, not yet. And maybe you can put it in a magic pot. Two travelers came to a town where no one ever shared. They were hungry and they needed something to eat. But they knocked on every door. Please, they said, could you give us something to eat? We haven't eaten for three days. But everyone said the same thing. I don't care. I won't share. They said, we don't need very much. Just a little bit of something. But everyone answered, no. Well, if these people really are so poor that they have no food to share with us, Maybe we should fix them our magic soup. So the two travelers went to the center of town and they called out, If anyone in this town has a big black pot, we will make the most incredible soup you ever tasted. Curiosity, an old woman brought a huge black pot and set it down in the middle of the square. Gather round, gather round, everybody, they said, and everyone gathered round as the two travelers put some water in that pot and built a fire underneath. And then everyone watched as one of the travelers reached down and picked up a stone out of the road and threw it into the pot. This, he said, is no ordinary stone. And this is no ordinary soup. We're making stone soup. We're making stone soup. We're making stone soup today. Hey, can you sing that? <laughs> We're making stone soup. We're making stone soup. We're making stone soup today. Hey, and it will be nutritious, delicious, incredible, edible. But it would taste a little better if we had a few more ingredients to put in it. <laughs> well said, woman. I've got some green beans. Okay. Go and bring it, said the travelers. Anybody here got anything to put in the pot? Anybody got an idea? What could you give to put in the pot? <laughs> potatoes. Yes, they said potatoes. Bring some potatoes. How about you? Yellow dress. What would you put in the pot? Think of it before you raise your hand, uh huh? A banana. A banana, they said. A little unusual, but I bet it'll taste good, they said. They said, Bring what you got and put it in the pot. Bring what you got and put it in the pot. Sing that. Bring what you got and put it in the pot. Bring what you got and put it in the pot.
Edible? Edible? Couldn't it taste better if we had a few more ingredients? Anybody got any ingredients? Okay. Before you raise your hand. What have you got? Strawberries. Okay, how about you? Okay, well, these are some in interesting ingredients. How about you? A cat. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Native American books like The Legend of the Blue Bonnet. All right, 
Let's see where we're going now to Latin America. This is underneath the United States. Latin America goes all the way from Mexico down through Central America, down into South America. That's Latin America. They have lots of wonderful markets in Latin America. There's a food market. There's a market with lots of crafts, like I've got there. There's my sister-in-law and my nephews in a market in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And here's a song about going to the market to buy some musical instruments. I'm going to have you help me do this. And I want you to not just sing this, I want you to help me play the instruments. There's Jose Luis Orozco. This comes from a book of his called Diez de Ditos and other play rhymes and action songs from Latin America. Here's another book with other great songs. There'll be a guitar. There'll be a clarinet and clarinet. There'll be a violin. And then a cello, which is pronounced violon in Spanish. And there'll be a tutut, a tambor, or a hand drum. So we're going to have all of those things in this song. And I want you to help me sing it. Okay, let's practice the instruments first. Let's see how we play a guitar. See how with one hand I hold up the neck. Okay, put up your hand on this side. And now with the other, I'm going to strum the strings. Ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da. Good. The clarinet comes out of my mouth and I stop the holes with my fingers. Good. Violin. This part goes up under my chin and I hold up the neck. I take the bow with the other hand. I go, lean, lean, violin. The cello, el violon, it sits down on the ground, and I go across this way. Lord, Lord, violon. Good. And then, el tum tum, tum tum, el tum tum. Okay, ready? En la pulgar de San Jose, yo compré una guitarra. Okay, try singing that with me. En la pulgar de San Jose, en el San Jose flea market, yo compré una guitarra. I bought a guitar. Yo compré una guitarra. Now try playing it. Lean, 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 lean. 
mariposa, mariposa, qué mapita que estás. How pretty you look, she said. Lo sé, lo sé. No quieres decirme más. I know. Do you want to tell me more? He said, mariposa, mariposa, ¿qué te casas conmigo? Would you marry me? see how they'll act 
when they get married. There she is talking to Agnes Eva. That's the That's the mountains of Peru. That's another part of Latin America. Peruvian people with their namas or llamas. And a wonderful story, Love and Roast Chicken. If you haven't read that book, you need to try that. That's about a trickster named Cooley the guinea pig. He's always tricking Coyote, but he gets himself in trouble one night, and he works, goes to work for the farmer, and he goes out into the alfalfa field, and he has a big party, and the farmer gets mad. And so he makes a sticky doll and puts it out there, and he gets stuck to it when the doll won't talk to him. And he convinces, he convinces Coyote to change places with him, because when Coyote asks him, what are you doing there? He says, oh, the farmer wants me to marry his daughter. And she eats chicken every day, and I don't like chicken. And so, and so he gets her to change places. Well, I'm going to flip right through to the very end here. Lots of interesting places. Here are some stories from Africa about a Nazi. And a, a story about a Goyo. But I want to finish with a little story from Japan. Cranes are very popular in, in Japan. They like to make paper cranes. In this story, the paper crane, this is probably in the United States, but there are some people who are Japanese. It says that long ago there was a man who had a restaurant where lots of people came. But one day they built a highway and they stopped coming. And then one day a strange man came in. He didn't have money. No. He didn't have money, but the man served him a nice meal and said, he said, thank you so much. I'd like to leave you a gift. And he left him a paper crane. He gave it to the boy and he said, if you want the crane to dance, just clap your hands. Well, it was just as the boy said. He clapped his hands and the crane came down and danced. When the few people were there, they heard about it, they started telling each other. And pretty soon, lots of people were coming to the restaurant again. They would come and they would watch that crane dance. What an unusual thing. People came and they, and, and then one day, after a long time with that crane, the man came back. He took out a flute and he played it, and the crane came down off of the shelf and it danced one last time. It danced beautifully, the best it had ever danced. And then the man got on the crane and he rode off. Well, that sounds sad, but you know it wasn't so sad because the people who kept coming to see the crane in the restaurant they liked it so much talking to each other and being there that they came back and they started telling the stories about the crane and acting it out and doing the dances. They're still coming there and you know what, at the end, the boy is learning the flute. Now that's a strange story. It's the kind of story you need to think about. And here's what I think about this story. Here's what I think this story is about. It was wonderful to see that crane, but even after the crane was gone, people kept telling the stories and enjoying it. And you know, things happen, and the things pass, but then somebody writes a book on it, and we keep reading the book. And even after you read the book, and I tell you about these books, they stay in your mind, kind of like those people who remember the crane, and it makes your life a lot richer and more enjoyable. And if you will read some of these books I've told you about, and some other ones, you will find that like that crane, it'll come alive inside of you, and those stories will travel with you as you live and as you grow up. 
I have had a great time being with you, telling stories and singing songs. You've been a great audience. I hope that you will read a lot and discover more books yourselves. Oh, 
You get behind them. Why are you going to go? Yeah, you wait for all the kids. Mom, baby, what's up?